What's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. Clearly, as you can see, that gentleman over there is Stocks with Josh. And we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to open up by talking about what an opportunity it actually could be for you and I if the debt ceiling doesn't get, uh, if these guys mess it up like they normally do, uh, that will be a, a, for me, it'll be a buying opportunity. And then we're going to go into some technicals with stocks with Josh. Those of you that remember, we used to do technical Tuesdays. We're going to try to pick that up. We may start once a month, once every, uh, or twice a month. I think we'll probably start twice a month. I like to hit it on the first of the month. Josh, introduce yourself to the good people. Hey, Stock Up family. This is Josh Nichols with Stocks with Josh. And yeah, I mean, Larry and I have a lot of offline conversations about where these markets are going. And I can tell you one thing that we both agree on is that this debt ceiling is a wall. The S&P 500 has been in uh, top gear, flying along, fueled with the jet packs of Apple and big tech. And the question is, is this debt ceiling going to bring it all to a hard stop. That's what we're going to talk about today, I guess. Yep. So here's what I want to tell you guys. There is a lag in the systems where it switched from screen to screen. So please uh, uh, forgive it, but it's technology, right? N uh, first of all, hit that like, subscribe, and the notification bell, all right? So Josh, if you don't mind, I'm going to try to attempt to go to the other screen uh, where you and I will be shown. And uh, there we go. This is what I want to open up and show people, Josh. So now there is all of this talk about the S&P. Uh, there was, I'm not going to play it, but there's a gentleman that said we could fall 40 to 45%, right? We could fall 40 to 45% if they don't increase the debt ceiling, right? And so what I did here, if we come off today, and fall by 40 to 45%, even 30%, Josh, we are literally, literally all the way down here. This was uh, uh, the great COVID. I almost said great recession. This was COVID, Josh. Look at this, right? Yep. We are literally just getting out of the holes of COVID. Here's the October lows over here. So we're yep. talking about falling all the way down here at 35%. Let me go here and show you guys, right? So even if we go uh, a year back, these are the October lows right here. And from the October lows, we're now up 15%. And if we went back, so here's the October lows, right? As you can see, that's 41.27. So let's just go here to 41.55-ish. If we go down 30%, 35%, look at there. Here's where we are. This is what I was trying to show in the other chart, right? But if we went down 40% to 45%, we're talking about back where we were. Here's 45%, about right here. We're, we're talking about back to uh, in the COVID territory. Um, Josh, what say you about that? Because I have something that um, I want to say that I'm actually looking forward to it if that happens. If we fall that far because they did not raise the, the debt ceiling, which you and I know is kicking the can down the road. If they don't do it like in 2011, 2011, it didn't fall that far. I think it, it fell uh, closer to 15%, you can correct me. But if that does happen, Josh, I'm buying. Josh, ask me what 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 will I be buying? Larry, what you gonna be loading up on? I'm glad you are. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Josh. Everything, literally everything. And if that provides an opportunity, there's another video I'm not gonna play of a Republican saying um, that even if we go into default, remember we lost our credit rating. That was the first time, but they've always, always, always raised the debt ceiling. They, they have always done it, right? 
And so it's just a cat and mouse game. It's politics. You guys know the further in the hole we get, the more politics arise. But it could be an opportunity for you and I to load up on our, uh, you know, our plays. It doesn't matter. VOO, VTI, Apple, Microsoft, the, the entire market has the potential to tank. Now, these are big ifs. So if what this gentleman said that the market could fall by 40 to 45 percent, I'm buying. And I don't care how low it goes beyond that, because that discount is so much lower than the October lows. Go ahead, Josh. Well, OK, I love the conversation and I'm just burning to to respond. It sounds like you, me, all of us would love a second chance bottom. OK, Boom. now, you know, I stirred the pot in a recent video, Larry, where I said you missed the bottom. Yes, right? you we, did. All, we all did. Right. Yep. And, you know, one of the things that I had been saying in the last quarter of 2022 is that not everything is going to bottom at the same time. Exactly. Okay? Well, it's like a cascading. And we all saw that it was big tech that actually bottomed. They didn't, bo big tech didn't bottom in October. Big tech bottomed at the tail end of December and the beginning of January. And whereas a lot of other small cap stocks, a lot of other caps had, uh, had bottomed in October, big tech lagged and it bottomed later, right? And so that's really the issue is, is the question that I've been posing, right? And it's sort of a disturbing question to some people who've been getting ready for this big, massive leg down is whether or not we're gonna get it, whether we're gonna get that second chance. And what really uh, you know, caught me by surprise, Larry, was when I was diving into the charts and I noticed that this Gaussian channel phenomenon, you wanna call it, that over the last 20 years, every single time it crossed back above to the top to the middle of the channel and above, it never went below for the last 20 years of recessions. So here's the number one question I've been getting, and I'm gonna throw it back to you here, Larry, in just a minute. Yep. Number one question people have been saying, but Josh, the bottom has never occurred uh, before the Fed has pivoted. Okay, yes. that's a big question, yep. right? Now, here's the dynamic question, of that, Larry. Pivot or reverse? or reverse or begin to ease. I think that's, I yep. think all of that's fair. Uh, now this goes into the fact, first of all, I wanna just say this, you know, we're having this dialogue because we're trying to examine both sides of the argument so that we don't get stuck in a perma bull, perma bear mind frame, because that'll get you wrecked. You'll be yep. the last to the party or you'll stay at the party too long. Yep. Either way, you, Larry, you know that you don't wanna show up last to the party, right? Nope. And don't be don't tardy to, to the party. Wrong, you, you, know? yep. you don't want to overstay your welcome. Absolutely. So, so the fact is, no, the charts are not going to be perfect every single time, but they do need to be considered. They do need to be minded as well as the data. So let me, let me take a wide scope out and talk about the data. I did a video almost a year, maybe, no, six months ago, comparing the 2008-2009 recession to the current environment. And when I did my own due diligence, Larry, and I dived into it, one of the things that I found is that the data, the charts, you could compare them, but the data was uncomparable because the data over in 2008, 2009 was really bad. We're talking manufacturing was down on the floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas manufacturing's been going, been, been holding strong and back so in 2008, 2009. Yeah, back in 2000, 2009, employment, people were getting laid off. You and I had tons of people that we knew that were losing their jobs, tons of folks at the church and people we knew were unemployed. Right now, it's yep. an extremely tight labor market. So the data does not align. And this is where I would say that uh, that even though we're, we, we have this inverted yield curve, right, which is an yep. ominous warning, and people talk about the 2022 recession with two negative GDP quarters. One of the other dynamics of two of a recession is negative two negative GDP numbers and and employment dropping. Right. Employment never. Uh, we we got more employment. We didn't get less. And so the data did not align in 2022 to confirm that the markets were ready or able to go down. 
Now, I think this is where we have to ultimately uh, so sort out this question, Larry. The fact is that in the this market could continue to go up relentlessly until there's a reason for it to go down. And the only reason that I can think of, because earnings, as you know it, Larry, have not been that bad. Not the bad at all. The only thing that's going to cause this market to go, you got Warren Buffett and and uh, Tim Cook slapping each other high fives and Warren's like, six, six percent, I, you know, shoot, I can buy some more Apple. These people are excited about investing uh, Apple at $173. They're not scared. But the, the only thing that's going to bring this market down right now is this debt ceiling crisis. Mm -hmm. And it could be a flash down. The question is, are people going to miss it looking for a bigger bottom? That I'm going to sort through. Yep. So I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to keep it really close because I know you have some sh charts to show us. We're already 11 minutes in. It goes so quick when I'm with your brother. Okay. I, I personally believe that we are in a rolling recession from the data that I have uh, looked at. And yes, jobs still remain strong, uh, um, but there are things that are facing uh, in, on top of the inverted yield curve. You gotta look at um, uh, real estate and commercial real estate is getting, sla is getting spanked, which will eventually yeah. come to residential. And then you got um, you got uh, credit squeeze that's happening because of the banks collapsing. There's a lot of things that are happening, uh, and I believe that we're in a rolling recession. As you know, some of the stocks, some of the sectors are in recessions, and some of them are look like they're in a bull market. And um, I personally, this is I'm not speaking for Josh. I'm speaking for myself. I personally believe that we are in a rolling recession. And everything else will catch up. Jobs, those could leave. That is the quickest. As a matter of fact, job loss hits quicker than the real estate falling. It happens so quick. And you go, what happened to all of the jobs? I mean, there are massive layoffs. And I'm not talking about tech. I'm talking about the jobs that employ most of us. Okay. So, Josh, we're going to switch now. And I want you to, what do you have a chart to show us? Because we yeah, are, we, I want to look go ahead. at the S&P 500. And uh, I think let's that, look at um, Okay, well, all right. So, well, you know, so here's the bottom line. Here's where the S&P 500 is. I've shown everybody the Gaussian channel. This is actually the weekly view. In my previous videos, I showed people the three-day view, which is different, okay? It shows uh, it being at the top of the channel. But let's just stick back to the weekly view for a moment for the sake of this conversation. One of the things that I pointed out is that whenever this has typically in the 2008, 2009 recession, it came down through the channel. It got it back tested the middle of the channel twice. This now this is our current uh, moment here. But in 2008, 2009, same thing. And after it had tested it twice, when it came back through it, it only went up from there. OK. Now, let's just say for a minute that we're in a rolling recession. The thing that, and I agree with you on that, Larry. I, I agree that we're in a, a very possible rolling recession. And the part that, in my view, makes it rolling is that we don't have all of the bad data that the market can afford to price in yet. It Correct. appears that a lot of that is going to possibly come in 2024. And so here's, here's what needs to be accounted for on everybody's uh, behalf. If that bad data is going to come in 2024, then why wouldn't the markets continue to climb? Uh, maybe they'll falter a little bit here. That could be expected. We're obviously not going to go straight up. We could vacillate in this range above this channel. But ultimately, we might find ourselves continuing to go up and test the top of this channel only to come back by year's end where everybody thinks that we're going to end up and be around 4,000. This is where all the smart money, Larry, has said that this market will end up between 38 and yep. 4,000 on the S&P 500. Now, if the fact is the market, if the market traced back above the top of this channel and essentially came very close to making a new high, which could happen, it then uh, could come down and have a massive crash in 2024, bringing us back to a new low.
okay, if the data was bad enough. But now I'm going to be an antagonist. I'm stirring the pot today in every uh, part of this video. AI is come, it came out of nowhere. And it's yes. very, very profitable for yep. all of big tech. It's It was a game changer. It's a recession disruptor. And I don't know that a lot of people have uh, have truly taken it into consideration. We could begin to see some maf massive profit gains by big tech, as well as a number of other companies in the third and fourth quarter of 2023. We're going to see companies that are slow to AI dying in 20 at the end of 2023 those are all the education companies and we're going to see other companies that are quick to it thriving and getting an a earnings boost which is another reason why people who are sitting entirely on cash could get more and more frustrated holding that bag into the end of this year and just seeing big tech continue to rally now i'm not saying this people are going to come back later and say joshua said it was all going up I'm saying this because we have to keep some balance in the dialogue about yes. these markets. Trade about the what's market really going to trade the market we're in. Go ahead, Larry. Yep. Hey, so listen, we're not going to cover crypto on this one. We're going to cover it on Josh's. Josh, uh, before I talk about the school, because we are already at 18 minutes, it just goes so quick. Well, I, I want yeah, you to okay, talk brother. about. Yeah, say that again. I said uh, time is flying. Yep. Talk about what you're going to talk about over on your page. Just give a, give me one minute and tell us what you're going to talk about on your page. Well, absolutely. No, today the main focus is going to be crypto. And I'd love, Larry, for you to join me. Maybe we could continue this conversation on my page and do a crypto video together. Uh, I think it. you've got uh, very valuable insight on that. And yeah, so crypto is like big tech in this precarious spot. It pushed all the way up to 3,100. It's pulled back a little bit. And now the question is, will it pull back more or is it just pausing before it continues the rally? And uh, we all saw Matic the other day break down. I'm going to cover and explain that as well as we, you know, we might even touch on some Pepe, uh, you know, coin and Pepe some Le other Pew. things, but that <laughs> Pepe Le Pew, man, we want to talk Pew. about it. <laughs> All right, good people. <laughs> We're going to leave it right there. But listen, listen, this is what I want you guys to see. Uh, and I, I want you guys to do. I want you guys to go and look at the top link below. That is Stock Up U, Stock Up University. All of this stuff that Josh was just talking about, the Gaussian channel uh, the <laughs> and all of this, he shows you. He shows you basic charting, right? So you could learn how to find these buy and sell orders in there. Of course, we got Keenan Grace teaching options, myself, beginner basics and basic fundamentals. We got uh, Stock Curry in here, also giving, lending his talents to basic fundamentals. And we got Mommy Trader teaching uh, dividend investing. That is Stock Up U, Stock Up University. OK, let me get the screen back to where it should be. And um, let's make sure we check those out. Good people. Top link below. If you want to be able to fully understand what Josh is talking about and learn how to do it yourself. He does an excellent, excellent job of doing that. So now, good people, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. Make sure you check out the links below and uh, we will see you over on Stocks with Josh's page. And there'll also be a link below to his page. Uh, say goodbye to the people. Uh, Josh, live, love, laugh, and learn. It's all yours. As always, peace and blessings, my friends. Take care. See you in the next video. Peace.